Um, and uh, uh, thank you to Casa uh, Italiana, to Stefano uh, Albertini for uh, inviting me, and to David uh, Forgas for uh, being a, a commentator. And, uh, and thank you very much to uh, each and uh, um, all, all of you. Uh, also, uh, uh, let's say, to uh, give me the uh, opportunity to, um, let's say, enjoy spring that in Italy, in Italy hasn't uh, arrived uh, yet, unfortunately. Um, this is the uh, um, outline of my uh, talk. I will um, basically uh, provide you with some background uh, uh, on uh, Italy's labor market and uh, income maintenance for uh, the unemployed before the crisis, which is what actually uh, uh, triggered in conjunction with the crisis uh, uh, a series of uh, labor market and uh, unemployment benefit uh, uh, reforms. Um, and uh, then I will analyze uh, uh, these uh, 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 cycles, so to speak, of uh, reform, uh, dividing the uh, uh, period in uh, three sub periods, speaking of uh, a first, uh, 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 let's say, uh, phase during which uh, the Berlusconi government. Um, basically uh, reacted to the employment crisis by introducing incremental adjustments uh, and by doing so uh, the Berlusconi government let's say uh, uh, forged uh, uh, some distributive coalitions uh, 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 made of social partners the government regions uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, employers that actually uh, uh, were important also in when Monti tried to uh, uh, reform the uh, uh, Italian labor market and in particular the, uh, uh, um, say, 
short time work, uh, class integration and unemployment benefit uh, system. And uh, speaking of uh, Monti, I will try to show you, uh, he introduced a very important uh, uh, labor market reform. Um, its effects are still, um, are yet to be seen, of course, given, given the overall uh, uh, economic, uh, 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 um, let's say, environment. Uh, but the reform itself is, uh, uh, is, is quite important. Um, and I will try to show you, um, let's say, the way in which he acted by basically uh, taking unilateral action. Mm? And uh, 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 his, uh, the, the, the main aim of uh, the uh, Monti uh, government in introducing this uh, reform was that of, uh, say, playing a signaling game vis-a-vis -vis international investors, international markets. Uh, and so we will see uh, the role of market discipline in, uh, in, all, in all this. So uh, if I may uh, uh, anticipate something that uh, uh, I, I will, I will uh, talk about later, um, I would say that, uh, say, looking at Monty's uh, uh, labor market reform, uh, teaches us that how, uh, shows us how, uh, um, let's say, uh, uh, Italy never, never signed a, a, a memorandum of understanding uh, and uh, never asked for help, formalized help, from uh, uh, European institutions and uh, the uh, International Monetary Fund, as Greece did, as Portugal did, as Ireland did. However, however, there was a good deal of what I call informal conditionality whereby uh, international uh, institutions actually told the Monti government what to do. And this resonated quite well with Monti's, uh, 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 let's say, ideas uh, on how the labor market should be reformed. Um, then um, I will get to Renzi. I will say something about the uh, Letta uh, government. Uh, 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 and uh, I will also say something about the Renzi government, which is uh, 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 our current uh, uh, government in, uh, in Italy, and I guess that most of you uh, are probably interested uh, 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 in this part, but uh, uh, um, I, uh, uh, this is also uh, the part that we might discuss more at length uh, during the Q&A uh, session. However, my take uh, uh, in, uh, about Renzi, Renzi's uh, uh, policies, uh, or the way in which his policy making say, is that while Monti was speaking to international markets and international organic actors, okay, the EU, the European Commission, the European Central Bank, uh, the uh, 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 International Monetary Fund, Renzi speaking to the Italian, well, not, e not even the Italian electorate, okay, the Italian political community, hmm? uh, 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 the Italians, uh, trying to, as I uh, write down here, uh, uh, revive animal spirits in a uh, depressed uh, country. Um, so some uh, background, and I will try to not to be Italian and speak rigorous, rigorously to the 40, 45-ish minutes that uh, 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 I've been uh, allotted. Um, now, um, we, we usually read in uh, newspapers um, how rigid the Italian labor market is, huh? and we should reform it every second year, huh? or possibly uh, 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 every year, because it's rigid and so it depresses uh, 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 creation of jobs and so on and so forth. Actually, I, I don't want to be too technical uh, 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 here. Just, you know, I, I'll give you many, I'll show you many uh, uh, data and, uh, and uh, uh, figures but just to give you an idea, okay? And uh, uh, basically, this is an index. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. my voice is sufficient. Great. Um, this is an index of, let's say, rigidity of the labor market for open-ended workers, okay? What are sometimes called permanent. I, I, I don't like to call them permanent, open-ended. So they have tenure, okay? However, the contract can be terminated. And, uh, you know, the ways in which uh, uh, their contract can be terminated, of course, uh, implies uh, 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 rigidities, okay? Uh, uh, so the, the more difficult it is to terminate uh, an open-ended contract, 
the more rigid the labor market is supposed to be. Okay? Um, and uh, you see that, I mean, we, 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 we all think that the US is, has a very uh, uh, flexible labor market, okay, and it's here, the UK as well, but in Europe, we believe that Denmark has a very flexible labor market, okay? Um, and Italy has a very rigid labor market. Well, according to the OECD, uh, and this is the established way of, uh, 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 for uh, measuring uh, uh, rigidity of a labor market, Italy's position, Italy's index, uh, value on the index, is indistinguishable from the Danish uh, uh, value. So Italy is as flexible as Denmark, and certainly much more flexible than uh, well, Spain, okay, the Netherlands, Germany, or France. Mm -hmm. And it has been so since the early 1990s. So what you read sometimes on the Wall Street Journal, or quite often actually, the Italian labor market is so rigid that, well, that is not true. However, however, it is highly segmented. And uh, what I mean, well, we know there is, uh, you know, there are divides, segmentations between the North and the South, we, 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 we all know this. Men and women, uh, just some figures, uh, uh, um, let's say there is a 20 percentage point uh, difference, okay? between uh, employment rates for men and for women. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, however, I will, I will say something now about uh, these two other dimensions of segmentation. Between standard and non-standard workers, and by standard workers, I mean open-ended full-time workers, okay? The kind of, you know, post officio, eh? the kind of employment relationship that uh, 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 occurred eh? up to, say, 20 or 25 years ago, mm? uh, and uh, non-standard workers, so fixed-term workers, temp agency, temporary agency workers, uh, independent contra contractors, and so on and so forth. And within standard workers, between those uh, employed in large and those employed in small uh, firms. And uh, I will start from this, and uh, I mean, don't, don't, don't worry, I will not go through all this. Uh, 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 um, why this segmentation between uh, um, uh, uh, workers employed in large and workers employed in uh, small firms? Well, individual dismissal rules apply to uh, uh, most uh, uh, European countries. Something that is quite peculiar to Italy is that no severance pay is uh, uh, envisaged, meaning that when an uh, uh, employee gets dismissed, he or she does not automatically get severance payment, does not automatically get uh, money hmm? in exchange for the dismissal. So the only way for the worker to get something huh, uh, uh, when dismissed, legally, is uh, um, to file a labor suit. Okay and uh, a, a labor lawsuit. And uh, if the judge finds the dismissal unlawful in small firms, the employer pays. Hmm? In large firms, and this is the famous Article 18 of a, a, a 1970 law called the uh, Worker Statute, Statuto dei Laboratori, in large firms, if the judge finds the dismissal unlawful, um, up to mo uh, 2012 to the Monte Fornero reform, uh, uh, it was the employee, it was the worker who could choose whether to get uh, monetary compensation or to get reinstated in his or her previous job. Okay? And this is, this is what is generally believed uh, by commentators on labor market, or say neoliberal commentators on uh, uh, labor market, to be a hindrance to growth and uh, uh, innovation. And this is where uh, several governments, Berlusconi governments, uh, during the, old, uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, 2000s, and then uh, uh, the Monti government, this is what was targeted by uh, such governments. Um, the second, uh, uh, however, however, let's say, uh, while this, uh, these rules I've been uh, uh, speaking uh, uh, of so far, 
have not been, well, let's say, weren't changed for 20 years, or actually more than 20 years, up to the Monte Fornero reform in 2012, hmm? something more fundamental huh, uh, uh, took place, uh, some more fundamental changes took place uh, in the Italian labor market since uh, the uh, 1990s. And that is a marked liberalization of uh, non-standard contracts, which actually created the second segmentation. First segmentation for standard workers, those employed in large and those employed in small firms. Uh, second segmentation, or second line of segmentation, for uh, between uh, 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 standard workers and non-standard workers. These are all the uh, 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 reforms that made it easier for employers to hire under non-standard, uh, in particular fixed term contracts. Fixed term or temp agency workers, what uh, you will sometimes uh, uh, sometime see as TAW, that's temp agency workers. Um, and you actually see here how uh, Italy is the country that uh, liberalized, uh, let's say made it easier over the past 20, 25 years, made it easier uh, 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 to, uh, uh, for its employers uh, to hire under non-standard contracts the most. So Italy is the country that has liberalized uh, 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 its, uh, 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 its rules for hiring under uh, non-standard contract, contracts the most. Hmm? Uh, followed by Sweden, by the way. Um, and you see how uh, in the early 1990, actually 1990, um, this is the percentage of uh, uh, temporary in total dependent employment. So the percentage of uh, uh, employees huh, that are uh, 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 working under uh, fixed term contracts. And uh, uh, 1990, Denmark, France, Germany, about 10%. Well, Spain had already liberalized its labor market and uh, it was 30%. Italy only 5%. But you see how in 2012, Italy, uh, Italy's share of uh, uh, temporary workers is uh, uh, as high as uh, 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 those of Germany or France. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, let's say a, a, a catch-up process has uh, occurred, and or a catching-up process has occurred, and actually the most striking figure is the one uh, in the, for the, uh, 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 let's say, younger workers. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Italy, uh, Italy's share of uh, 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 temporary total dependent employment has increased uh, uh, fourfold during uh, 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 between 1990 and uh, uh, 2012. And some more uh, figures to tell you how important this process uh, has been for the Italian labor market. Uh, new uh, employment contracts. So all the employment contracts that were signed in 2012, um, more than 80% are temporary contracts. Hmm? Only, let's say, less than uh, uh, two contracts, are uh, two new contracts out of 10 are open-ended contracts. And, uh, uh, and, you know, of those that are open-ended contracts, only one in 10 is, uh, 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 let's say, involves a uh, young worker. Um, and uh, this is, let's say, uh, uh, this is something to be looked at uh, 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 because actually, I mean, these temporary contracts are very short term. 40% uh, of, of all temporary contracts last less than six months and half of them less than a year. And uh, so you see how uh, um, Say this, this second uh, uh, divide, this second segmentation uh, uh, line uh, between standard and non-standard workers uh, overlaps, let's say, with uh, the young-old workers divide. Huh? So it's mainly young workers who get these uh, uh, kinds of uh, contracts. Hmm? And, uh, well, it wouldn't be a problem if what economists uh, uh, call port of entry uh, should apply, meaning these contracts are for those who start working, okay, so they, then, you know, they, uh, 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 it's like, a, say, a, 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 a trial period 
the employer gets to know them, and after the employer gets to know them and uh, gets to know that they are good, he or she hires them under open-ended contracts. This is called port of entry, okay? Well, this is somewhat true, somewhat true, and these are data that come from the, one of the books that uh, Ruth uh, Benghiat was mentioning, uh, written with uh, uh, Fabio Bertone and uh, Matteo Ricciardi, The Political Economy of Work, Security and Flexibility. Okay, say, say uh, it is better to have a, uh, uh, for your future career, it is better to have a uh, uh, fixed contract than being unemployed. Well, not now, of course, it's better to work than not to work, right? But for your future career, it is better to have now for what are called transitions into better contracts and better jobs, it is better to be employed even with a fixed term contract, I'm sorry, uh, than with an open end, uh, than, with, than being unemployed, okay? However, and this is so this, what, what I was calling port of entry, uh, actually is the case, okay? So fixed term contracts help workers get into the labor market. However, a good deal of persistence occurs, meaning that you tend to get entrapped, you, you tend to get locked in into the kind of contract that you have. So if you start, maybe it's not Japan, where you know, there is a, a situation of, of full uh, apartheid, if, you, if you're able to get a permanent contract at the beginning of your career, you're fine. Otherwise, you will always be you know, outside the regular labor market. So Italy, luckily, is not Japan. Still, still there is a good deal of pers or persistence, meaning that um, the most likely next contract that you are going to get is of the same type of the contract that you have now. So if you now have a fixed term contract, well, you are kind of in trouble, right? And we see that youngsters tend to get only fixed term contracts. And actually this, this is a problem for the individual, hmm? but this is a problem also at the systemic level, as a political scientist would put it, meaning for the society and for the economy, because fixed term uh, workers tend not to get training. Hmm? So the employer does not invest in training for them, in their human capital, uh, because he or she knows uh, that they can quit huh, in any moment. Or actually, let's put it the other way. The, um, the worker has no incentive in investing in training because uh, the worker knows that the employer can uh, uh, fail to renew their contract, okay? And so they don't invest in training. The employer knows this mm -hmm. and uh, 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 will tend to consider this kind of workers as, uh, you know, a, an inferior type, mm -hmm. getting lower training. So it's kind of a vicious circle whereby these kind of uh, 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 workers get lower and less and less uh, training. And getting less training, they, uh, uh, they, let's say, acquire less and less, lower and lower chances to get a better contract. Hmm? And so this segmentation between standard and non-standard easily becomes a, a segmentation between old and uh, young workers. It has negative effects on human capital, and therefore on productivity, which is the big problem of Italy. Eh? Uh, uh, sluggish uh, growth, if any growth at all, of uh, productivity. Um, and part of the story, actually, part of the story comes from uh, the expansion of uh, uh, such uh, 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 workers. And this is evidence from the Bank of Italy and other independent uh, uh, sources. Um, on top of this, there is uh, another, well, it's not on top, let's say, the, segmenta the two segmentations between workers employed in large firms and small firms and uh, the ones employed in fixed, uh, in, uh, yeah, fixed contracts and open-ended contracts actually tend to be replicated uh, not only in the labor market but also in the welfare state, okay? Because of the way in which the welfare state functions in Italy, it 
generally um, gives benefits that are uh, uh, linked to your labor market position. And therefore, if you, have a, uh, uh, you, are, if you are in an inferior labor market position, you will get uh, uh, lower uh, welfare benefits. Mm -hmm. And you see how these two segmentations translate uh, in the uh, realm of social protection, thereby creating what I call the situation of flex insecurity. So a pretty flexible labor market, but quite insecure for uh, 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 many of uh, the uh, many workers. Um, and uh, this is so also because in Italy we only have, uh, say, one pillar, uh, unemployment insurance, and we will see that it has many gaps. Uh, we don't have other schemes uh, for uh, uh, workers who, let's say, exhaust uh, uh, the right to unemployment insurance, and in particular, we have no minimum income guarantee. Okay? Uh, so no uh, floor uh, 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 of uh, uh, rights that apply to all uh, uh, individuals, irrespective of their labor market position. That I, I, I written down Germany. Uh, Germany has uh, all this. Uh, um, so um, I, I, we we have. This is important to understand. Let's say the political economy or the politics of the reform. Um, uh, two kinds of income maintenance schemes. Uh, those that are rights-based, so unemployment benefits. Rights-based means, okay, there are rules. Hmm? And uh, if you have, let's say, accrued a certain amount of contributions and you become unemployed, well, you qualify. These are automatic benefits, okay? And uh, these are the unemployment benefits. However, very important in the past, still important now, and more, even more important after what the Berlusconi government did, it, it did if I should ever get that, um, are non-rights-based uh, 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 benefits. And in particular, what is internationally called short-time work, in Germany, Kurzarbeit, in Italian, Cassa Integrazione. Hmm? And uh, what is, why non non-rights-based, why discretionary? Well, because it's not that you, um, let's say, mature a right for these benefits. Huh? It is given um, by the public authority after consultation with the social partners. It is activated by the employer who asks for these, uh, 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 these schemes. However, it's not rights-based. Huh? It's given on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. Um, and, uh, I'm sorry, this red uh, uh, line here actually means that these uh, benefits are, provi are typically provided only to, or were typically provided before their extension that we will see uh, with the crisis, were typically provided to core workers, meaning workers with open-ended contracts in large firms. So only one side, eh, so to speak, of the two, uh, 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 you know, uh, segmentation uh, divides. Um, uh, and uh, uh, workers in small firms and workers uh, uh, in uh, non-standard contracts typically can only claim unemployment benefits. Um, however, unemployment benefits up to 2012 had many gaps, hmm? precisely because in the past, demand was for this, in particular demand on the part of the uh, uh, social partners and on the part of uh, trade unions, huh? that were, they were looking at their core constituency, which is often in the workers in large firms, hmm? and they cared less about ex expanding uh, 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 unemployment benefits. And, uh, so I was telling you that such benefits have gaps, or had before the Monet for Mayor reform, and uh, uh, let's say more than 10% of uh, uh, employees could not actually qualify for unemployment benefits if they lost the job. Okay, paid contributions thought they would get a benefit, but rules uh, were uh, uh, designed 
so as to exclude uh, 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 or with, with the effect of excluding uh, uh, more than 10% of them. Why? Because they were too young or because they had interrupted work careers, uh, women or workers on non-standard contracts or is insufficient contributions to, to low wages. In particular, this was, uh, 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 you know, a, 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 you know, particularly with particularly dire consequences for non-standard workers. So 25% of uh, uh, fixed term uh, workers, 45% of temp agency workers did not get unemployment benefits. Okay, they had a right, but they couldn't get it. Hmm? It might be the case many times that in, you have formally have a right, but then there are rules that exclude you. Hmm? This is a case in point. Um, and so, uh, this is the situation that obtained when the, cri the economic crisis hit Italy. And I will try to uh, be relatively uh, uh, quick now. Um, you see that comparatively, comparatively uh, Italy has uh, uh, been hit by mo the most hardest by the crisis. Huh? So if you compare... Uh, uh, this, uh, this is GDP growth, and when it's negative, it, it means that there is recession and uh, GDP uh, is shrinking. And uh, you see a lot of uh, uh, minuses for Italy that you don't see for Germany or for France, but you don't even see for Spain. Mm? So, in terms of GDP loss, this, the uh, 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 crisis uh, 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 has hit Italy the hardest. And, uh, of course, there were consequences for uh, employment and unemployment. Uh, these are employment trends, and uh, since 1993, you see the, these are numbers, okay? These are so uh, from 20 million Italian um, uh, workers uh, 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 grew from, uh, uh, say, about 20.5 million in the early uh, 90s. Uh, up to 23.5 million in 2007-2008, and they went down. We lost about 1 million workers huh? uh, as a consequence of the uh, crisis. Uh, and also, employment rates went down with the crisis. Uh, and you can see it even more clearly with uh, uh, unemployment trends. Hmm? So this is the effect of the crisis. Okay. and in particular youth unemployment. So uh, the percentage of uh, uh, individuals aged uh, uh, 25 or less that are actively looking for a job and uh, uh, don't find a job. Hmm? And they are about uh, uh, 700,000 uh, now in Italy, plus some 2 million uh, uh, young people who are actually what they are what are called needs huh? are not in education nor in employment nor in training so basically they do nothing and they are looking for nothing so overall almost three billion uh, 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 young uh, uh, citizens under 25 however if you compare the Italian employment situation in the aftermath of the crisis to that of the other uh, uh, European countries, and in particular to that of Spain, we see that we, we've seen, we've just seen that uh, Italy was uh, hit uh, uh, hardest by the crisis compared also to Spain. Okay, but you, of course, you see it in unemployment figures, but not as much as you would expect. Okay, so unemployment figures for Italy remained relatively low, relatively low, up to 2011-2012. This is, a, you know, a, a there's a leap here, okay? Mm -hmm. But if, if you compare it to Spain, for instance, so it, in this sense, Italy is closer to France than to Spain, okay? Something that you wouldn't have expected, looking at uh, uh, economic growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, how come? Well, this is a consequence of the policies that were introduced, uh, in particular by the 
Berlusconi government, Italy managed to shelter workers, uh, at least initially, for some years, huh? uh, despite, despite a non-existent stimulus package. So basically, in order to, to uh, 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 I mean, to keep the public expenditure under control, the then Treasury Minister Giulio Tremonti uh, basically did not introduce any uh, stimulus package in 2008, hmm? and Italy was, you know, the only country doing this, huh? and uh, uh, so it, it introduced the stimulus package of virtually nil, 0.2% of the GDP in 2010, vis-a-vis 1.5% of the GDP in Germany, okay? And actually what was introduced as a small stimulus package was reclaimed by, through higher taxes. And uh, of course, initially, this worked for Italian uh, 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 public finance, uh, 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 for Italian, let's say, public finance situation, but then, of course, uh, uh, it tended to generate uh, effects uh, in the longer period that we are suffering now. Be that as it may, how, despite all this, despite the importance of the crisis, despite its uh, uh, inaction, and it was a deliberate inaction, it's not that they were sleeping. Huh? Uh, it, it was Tremonti uh, uh, wanted to keep public finance uh, under control. Uh, how come that uh, uh, employment <coughs> figures did not, unemployment figures uh, did not uh, 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 soar, did not explode? Through extensive use of cassa integration, of short-time work. And uh, um, why? Because short-time work for those of you less familiar with, with this uh, 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 kind of schemes that are very important in Italy, but were very important also in Germany during the crisis, uh, uh, short-term work, cas integrazione, actually allows the employer to retain the labor force mm -hmm. and pays for, uh, 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 so basically the worker is not working at full hours, short-term work, okay? is working a, a, a lower number of hours than uh, in uh, uh, what is written in his or her uh, uh, work employment contract. And the difference, or part of the difference, is paid by this, uh, through this benefit, okay? And so, in unemployment figures, these workers do not show up. Hmm? And uh, the Berlusconi government actually uh, extended huh, this scheme, huh, making it very easy for employers to, uh, 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 let's say, uh, to use this scheme, okay? And uh, in, in, in all sorts of uh, ways, also extending it in order to uh, uh, address those uh, uh, problems of coverage, coverage that we've seen uh, for uh, unemployment benefits. Uh, I'm sorry, my students tell me all the time that I go back and forth with the slides. I'm, I'm sorry, I hope this is not um, right in there. And uh, uh, evaluation forms. Um, we've seen these gaps of coverage, okay? So one way to go about it would ideally be that on investing in uh, real unemployment and good unemployment benefits. Well, the Berlusconi, but this costs. Mm -hmm. a lot of money, and these are rights-based benefits, meaning that, meaning that once you introduce them, you can't, you know, take your word back. Mm -hmm. Workers will have a right to get them if they become unemployed. So what did the Berlusconi government do? Well, it expanded um, short-time work, which is discretionary. Meaning, well, I mean, we introduce the scheme, we give it ammortizzatori in deroga, mm -hmm. the income of ammortizzatori in deroga, so given in derogation to the rules on a case-by-case -case basis, on a discretionary uh, basis. So this allows you not to give uh, uh, rights to uh, uh, workers, but to decide who gets what and uh, when and thereby keep uh, uh, public expenditure under control. Um, and this created what I call a bad uh, equilibrium, okay? Government has an incentive to do this because uh, it can keep uh, uh, unemployment figures down, 
uh, firms have an incentive uh, because basically it's paid by the fiscal revenue, uh, by the general revenue. Uh, um, regions uh, were involved, uh, trade unions were involved. So it was, you know, a bad equilibrium, but still an equilibrium. And what's the definition of an equilibrium? Well, something that keeps going, that is stable, um, if, uh, uh, you know, no exogenous shocks occur. And uh, this is the exogenous shock that occurred, huh? the sovereign debt crisis. So, say, the economic, the financial crisis escalated into something uh, different, for, in particular for, uh, we, uh, within the Eurozone and for some countries, peaks, uh, peripheral, well, I've been, you know, I, 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 I've always thought that, say, Finland was peripheral <laughs> rather than Italy, but now I know, reading the international press, that uh, Italy is a peripheral country. Um, and uh, 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 so, uh, what happened? That the uh, um, yield differential between uh, uh, the German treasury bonds and the Italian treasury bonds, so what uh, the Italian treasury has to give uh, 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 international uh, uh, investors more than uh, his uh, uh, German counterpart to buy uh, parts of the Italian uh, uh, debt uh, to, uh, uh, let's say, fi fund uh, 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 the Italian debt, um, has grown mm, uh, 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 over the past uh, 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 years, but if I, it, it, was, it had always been lower than 2%, or actually 2 percentage points, uh, 200 basis points when you read in, in financial press or in the press, uh, basis point, uh, 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 that means 100. So 200 means uh, uh, two percentage points, meaning that if uh, uh, the Italian uh, treasury bonds, if the German treasury bonds uh, give, uh, I don't know, 3% uh, 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 of interest, the Italian treasury bonds have to give 5%, okay? And uh, this was, relatively low, less than two percentage points, since the creation of the Economic and Monetary Union, mm -hmm. 1999. Well, it jumped to 400 basis points, four percentage points, in uh, the uh, summer of uh, 2011. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, 5th of August 2011, the US lost uh, its uh, uh, AAA uh, of uh, credit rating. But however, this occurred, this occurred earlier uh, as a consequence of basically mismanagement of the Greek uh, crisis within the Eurozone. And of course, uh, it uh, hit the countries uh, that uh, were believed to be weakest, uh, and Italy in particular, given its very high public debt and also probably given the kind of government that was uh, 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 at uh, the time, and we will see this in a, in, a, in a moment. So this is the kind of exogenous shock that changed uh, uh, completely uh, the environment, so to speak. And 5th of August 2011, a momentous date, the European Central Bank sends Berlusconi, the Berlusconi government sends Berlusconi, a famous letter asking for um, various things, I mean, a, 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 a package, uh, a, a, some intervention, and uh, um, in particular, it asked uh, a, a for uh, a, a reform of uh, hiring and firing open-ended workers, okay? So, a reform of Articolo 18. Mm -hmm. Not just that, it also asked for the introduction of a serious unemployment insurance system. Um, and for a pension uh, reform. Um, this letter was signed by the then president of the uh, ECB and uh, the future president of the ECB. It, it, it had been elected, so it, it was a president-elect who was actually still at the Bank of Italy. At the same time, at the same time, the president of the ECB announced the extension of, uh, let's call it an aid program, okay, to Italy. Italy, it is unconditional, meaning that uh, Italy did not, or and Spain, uh, did not have to sign any memorandum of understanding, such as Greece or Ireland or Portugal, 
basically the idea is, and uh, you know, uh, uh, technicalities are not important, but basically the idea is with this program, the European Central Bank buys Italian and Spanish bonds so as to reduce uh, that uh, 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 yield differential that uh, uh, the Italians in the room know, know as spread. Okay? And uh, it is unconditional, so I mean no strings attached. However, let's say some strings were attached, so informally there was conditionality. Okay? So at the same time, the European Central Bank uh, uh, announced that it would help Italy and uh, sends a letter to Italy asking for reforms to be introduced. Hmm? Without asking Italy to sign a memorandum of understanding, but clearly the two things are closely uh, uh, linked. <coughs> this is what I call informal conditionality. And, uh, um, okay, uh, Berlusconi tries to do that. Uh, uh, also tries to introduce a, a package, a financial uh, package involving austerity measures that, however, were mostly uh, uh, placed after the elections. And so markets fail, uh, uh, not, uh, uh, unsurprisingly, I mean, markets, uh, uh, he fails to persuade markets and uh, the Italian, the yield uh, uh, differential between Italian and Germany uh, and German treasury bonds uh, 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 increases uh, enormously uh, uh, over a month uh, or, uh, or so. And uh, Italy becomes the sick man of uh, Europe, or actually probably of the, of the advanced uh, uh, world at the time, and the crucial, the key country. Uh, because if Italy had, uh, uh, you know, if, if Italy had defaulted, then Spain and on its death, then Spain and France would have done the same. So Italy become, really becomes uh, 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 the key country in the international political economy. Um, I, I will need to rush uh, a bit, I see. And uh, uh, Berlusconi, let's say, promises a labor market reform in a letter to uh, the European uh, institutions, stating that by May 2012, and uh, by May 2012, the Italian government commit some passing a reform of labor legislation. Uh, institutional pressures intensify and uh, the IMF uh, uh, director openly speaks of a lack of credibility um, and uh, the ECB governing uh, board openly discusses the possibility to stop that aid, informal aid uh, program uh, that was made available uh, to Italy, so to speak. Hmm? Uh, if uh, the Italian government doesn't uh, uh, introduce reforms. Uh, um, there are some painful moments for all Italians at the time. I mean, the, 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 you, you might remember Angela Merkel and uh, Nicolas Sarkozy laughing when speaking of uh, the Italian, uh, 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 let's say, uh, the possibility that uh, the Italian government could uh, introduce uh, reforms. Um, and then Berlusconi resigns huh? after all these pressures on the part of the international uh, uh, actors. Um, the, Monty, the Monty government uh, 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 takes, uh, takes power. It immediately introduces a budget law worth 30 billion euro. Uh, it is 2% of GDP, mostly made by new taxes, kindly made by new taxes. Um, and intro immediately introduces a very harsh pension uh, uh, reform, um, and then he, in his keynote speech at the Senate, Monti himself says that the labor market, that, that he will introduce a labor market reform, but that however this reform will be um, made with the consensus of the social partners and applying only to new contracts. However then, these words were overturned and the reform was not uh, made with the consensus of the social partners, and I will say something quickly about this, and uh, we might get back to this in the Q&A uh, session, and it applies to all contracts and not just to new contracts. Um, this is, uh, 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 you know, the uh, uh, appraisal uh, uh, by the international press of uh, 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 even to the uh, Monty, 
uh, Monti's uh, uh, labor reform. Um, and this is important, ahead of EU summit. Monti needed this in order to show that Italy was doing its homework, or actually had done its homework, in order for the, uh, let's say, in order to convince the German bloc of the necessity of introducing uh, some mechanisms hmm, to rescue uh, uh, countries that faced uh, 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 tensions, so to speak, on the financial markets. What in the Italian uh, media has been called scudo anti-spread, eh? anti-yield differential shield. Okay? And uh, this is a new program uh, then introduced in September 2012 uh, called outright monetary transactions that actually, uh, uh, whereby the ECB actually can uh, uh, help uh, 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 member states that uh, uh, face uh, 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 difficulties in the, in the financial markets. And Monty actually wanted this, huh? not for Italy to undersign, to sign uh, 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 those packages, but of course if there is the shield, he was expecting that uh, tensions would be on the uh, international financial markets would be uh, eased. And this is actually what happened. Uh, and so he needed the Italian labor market reform, irrespective in a sense of its, of its contents, if I may say so, provided it was harsh enough. Huh? And uh, um, he could actually show, um, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, harsh enough vis-a-vis -vis the trade unions. Huh? Uh, 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 he needed it in order to buy the consensus of uh, uh, its European partners uh, uh, for this uh, uh, other you know, rescue mechanism. Um, I, I, I have no time, I can mm, get back to this, uh, uh, and it's also very boring, I would say, about the technicalities of the, uh, of the uh, labor market uh, reform. However, generally speaking, the most important uh, um, innovation is that still there is no severance pay. So when you are fired, you get no compensation. Hmm? However, there is a compulsory, say, preliminary stage where the worker and the employer with uh, the lawyers meet in order to see whether, you know, some let's say some agreement, some deal can be, can be struck, and uh, 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 the uh, 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 employer is willing to give money, compensation, mm -hmm. in exchange uh, for, uh, to the, to the uh, worker, and the worker is willing to accept money uh, 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 in exchange for, let's say, not going to court. And this is very important. And generally speaking, uh, if the worker goes to court, and uh, 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 the judge states that the dismissal was unlawful, there is no longer restatement into uh, uh, the worker's previous job. This is the most important part of the reform, okay? Uh, generally speaking, there are some exceptions, <coughs> but generally speaking, there is no more restatement into uh, uh, the previous job, and there is uh, monetary compensation that, however, doesn't take place uh, doesn't occur automatically, but only if uh, the worker uh, files a labor lawsuit. Okay. Um, okay. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go fast. Thank you. And uh, um, I told you something about, let's say, the political economy of uh, 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 the, uh, 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 the Monti reform, and I uh, uh, um, I, I can get back to this uh, uh, during the uh, uh, Q and uh, A session. What is important is, or what is interesting, at least for the political scientists, is the strategic use, use of market discipline. So the financial markets played by both the international organizations and the government. Okay? So instead of having direct uh, ways of regulating the behavior of the, of, uh, the national uh, government, as in Greece or in uh, Portugal, for instance, here the international institutions uh, use uh, this instrument of, uh, less formalized instrument of market discipline, mainly saying, okay, 
the Italian government, uh, uh, you know, is uh, to be uh, believed, uh, uh, so to be trusted, if and only if it introduces a labor market reform that uh, targets uh, these uh, things, in particular, uh, 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 employment protection legislation. And the Italian government actually plays the same uh, uh, game vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the Italian public opinion. Told you, I'm ready to uh, uh, discuss this with, with you in the Q and A uh, session. Um, also, the Monti government. Uh, this this is my reading, but based on many, many, many interviews to key informants, uh, tried to acquire international leg legitimacy that was totally lost, as we've seen in November 2011. Okay, in the in the last days of Berlusconi government, Italy's international reputation was totally gone. And uh, Monti tried to uh, 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 acquire, uh, 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 to gain reputation again, also doing union bashing, uh, playing tough uh, against what he considered uh, to be accessory to uh, uh, crime, uh, 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 unions in uh, particular. Uh, and this is a huge difference with the governments, Amato and Ciampi governments, of course, of the early 90s, that actually used the unions as, a, as an equivalent to a party system that was no longer there because of Tangentopoli. Mm -hmm. And also a difference with the Berlusconi governments that actually never tried to do union bashing. He tried to split the unions between the centrist unions and the CGL, the leftist union, but never did union bashing. I would say that Monti uh, did. And, okay, I will go uh, uh, fast now because I guess you are interested in Renzi. And uh, uh, um, so still there are many problems, and I take three more minutes if I may, still there are many problems after the Monti reforms, and actually Monti also introduced a, a, an unemployment benefit reform, reform that actually extends coverage, okay? So it is effective. Huh? Uh, um, however, I mean, still say 7% of workers do not get unemployment benefits if they become uh, unemployed. And uh, in particular, those uh, uh, non-standard workers. So there are, of course, there still were many problems after the Monti uh, reform. In particular, a problem of soaring unemployment and youth uh, un soaring youth unemployment, as we've seen, e unemployment benefit uh, coverage gaps, uh, rising poverty, mm? and uh, uh, absolute poverty. So impossibility to command, uh, say, a, a, a basket of goods that is uh, considered to be necessary to live uh, 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 decently uh, in, in, in the Italian society uh, these days. Uh, those figures rose from 3.4 to 4.8 million individuals uh, between 2011 and 2012. And then the electoral threat posed by uh, the Five Star Movement, Grillo's movement, the Movimento Cinque Stelle, uh, with the issue of uh, 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 giving, you know, a, what they call the citizenship income, that is actually a minimum income in, uh, uh, to, to uh, all. And these are the problems that the Letta government faced. Um, he tried to solve them. In particular, he was quite effective uh, in campaigning at the EU level for the launch of a program, Youth Guarantee, targeted at uh, 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 young unemployed, uh, that is funded by EU money and that was kicked off uh, in Italy today, the 1st of uh, May. Um, however, we know the fate of the Letta government and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, this guy uh, 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 became uh, uh, prime minister, um, but he started, uh, of course, addressing these problems uh, uh, before becoming prime minister, when he became when he became uh, the uh, secretary of uh, uh, the uh, Democratic Party, and so he he, he knows, uh, uh, or at least I mean his aides know that unemployment must be tackled with directly. Okay, and so less. So the idea was 
uh, tackling uh, uh, it less through regulatory changes, or at least the initial idea, but uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 through uh, actions, fiscal stimulus, uh, mass unemployment in Italy has rel now relatively little to do with uh, regulatory, with rules. Okay? It, has, it is a demand problem. Hmm? Uh, uh, it is a problem of aggregate demand. Okay? And also a problem of what economists call skills mismatch. Uh, meaning, I mean, I have, as a worker, I have some skills uh, that are not the skills that the employers uh, are looking for. And this is a problem of the educational system, this is a problem of the uh, uh, vocational training system, and this is a problem of uh, public employment services. And uh, uh, so the preparation of what was pompously called Italy's Jobs Act, um, took place in the first weeks of 2014 when Renzi was still a, uh, 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 secretary, or the secretary of the Democratic Party. Um, and he knew that income maintenance is key, that unemployment benefits are key, uh, and also uh, em employment services. Um, then, when he became prime minister, um, the focus, or at least the immediate focus, so this, in a sense, is probably where the things that uh, uh, should have been targeted first. But when he became, so let's say, solving the problem of aggregate demand, you know, the, uh, 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 strengthening unemployment benefits and so on and so forth. When he became prime minister, he did this. Huh? The fiscal stimulus, huh? whereby now low-income workers will uh, 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 see uh, uh, lower taxes and therefore we get, uh, uh, we see a higher uh, uh, take-home pay, okay? And this has precisely to do with this. Huh? However, in order to buy, say, the consensus of uh, the employers uh, to, let's say, target workers rather than, uh, 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 than firms, hmm? with, with the, uh, the stimulus package, he introduced, uh, by decree, uh, yet another uh, 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 liberalizing reform of, uh, 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 of, uh, um, of non-standard contracts, of fixed-term uh, contracts. Um, that, once again, I mean, liberalizes the labor market even further. The problem is that it does so without um, you know, addressing those problems in terms of lower training and therefore lower productivity. So we can expect, and at least there is a risk, of you know, even lower productivity as a consequence of this. Hmm? Um, whereas uh, unemployment and short time uh, uh, work reform uh, was put in a delegation bill and it's uh, actually in, uh, in, in the Senate with no room for the time being for a minimum income guarantee. So I am uh, uh, concluding, and uh, uh, I apologize for being very long. My personal take, if you're interested in that or Renzi strategy, is that he needs to act, act quickly, also because of the way in which he got into power. There was this original scene, right, of uh, kicking Letta out with no elections, basically. Huh? And uh, so he needs to act quickly, but he kn he's a very skilled politician, and he knows that any kind of reform will bring about changes in the future, only in the future. So there is a time lag of reforms. This is what killed Schroeder. Hmm? Schroeder introduced the Hartz reforms in order to address a problem similar to that of Italy now, uh, uh, high unemployment uh, rates, high uh, uh, youth unemployment rates, and then uh, he lost the elections and uh, the Christian Democrats benefited from the positive effects of his uh, reforms because they took place some years later. So the only way he has to go about this is through announcement effects. So since, let's say, changes from the content of the reform will occur only some years after, only in the future, the idea is, well, showing that we are reforming uh, a, 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 a blocked uh, a, a, a country, a country
country that has been the uh, epitomizing, you know, uh, 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 standstill. And uh, 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 so to play on behavioral effects. Huh? So to play on, to it's, it's a big bet on res immediate response on the part of uh, Italians. Hmm? Um, and uh, he does so through a, a totally insulated policy making, so not consult consulting uh, uh, social partners, uh, introducing uh, 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 blueprints. Then, obviously, a government has to negotiate, and uh, uh, I told you the, 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 the package <laughs> deal between uh, uh, the fiscal stimulus and uh, the labor market reform. Um, uh, uh, and so, to conclude, in a first phase, Berlusconi basically uh, was waiting for the storm. We are in New York, so I put in Sandy, but you, you have every second day apparently now, even though the, this, this was Sandy, though. Huh? And, uh, waiting for Sandy to pass by, locked uh, safely, or relatively safely, uh, inside. Uh, a very conservative incremental strategy. Um, however, his problem is that uh, uh, he managed to form, so to speak, a, a, a coalition, a stable equilibrium in the political economy, but in his parliamentary coalition was in total disarray, and his government was split on any uh, issue. And so, policy ineffectiveness. Monti, well, this informal but tough conditionality on the part of international actors, uh, and uh, 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 let's say his signaling game on the uh, uh, international, uh, 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 international markets. And actually, selective structural reforms. So he targeted pensions, he targeted labor, but other structural reforms uh, 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 of product and services uh, markets have not been so effective. Um, and then Renzi, and this is, I promise, my last uh, slide, um, is speaking to, instead of speaking to international arenas, as Monti, Renzi is speaking to domestic arenas, and uh, he plays this behavioral bet. He knows uh, that uh, uh, the uh, Italian labor market problem is mostly a problem of demand rather than now regulatory uh, uh, issues. Um, still, still, there is a, a, a risk of uh, privileging all solutions that we know uh, uh, that simply do not work. Thank you so much for your attention. very brief. I thought what I would perhaps do is try and play some of that back to you as a comment, as a bit of synthesis from a non-economist, how it appears to me, and then turn this into a few questions that will trigger, I hope, some other questions from the, the audience. So, um, very briefly. Um, seems to me you, you set out very clearly these three different strategies that there have been for dealing with the employment uh, problems. Uh, there's going to be the first one using the existing mechanisms say playing it safe and sheltering from Sandy, uh, primarily using the Casa Integrazione, short time work, as his mechanism uh, dealing with the unions but not bashing the unions uh, and so on. So that, but of course it fails because he then defaults on us and he, you know, offends the European Central Bank and he's kicked out. Um, then in that second phase, Monty essentially draws legitimacy <coughs> from European institutions. He's sort of put into place by them he responds to them, um, and he can ride roughshod over the unions, uh, he can introduce this pension reform without consultation with them, uh, 
uh, he can use tough measures. And he seems to get support from all the parties because he's a, a technocrat, he's not a, um, a representative of the political system. Um, and then Renzi, in some ways, seems to be a mixture of these two preceding models. I mean, he draws on some of the sort of pragmatism of Berlusconi. He doesn't, as you say, have to respond so directly to the European institutions, but he's still conditioned by what they expect him to produce. So it seems to me that it's very useful to have this historical picture. We may all want to talk about what Renzi is doing, but it doesn't make any sense to talk about it unless you know what's been happening in the last, well, really since 2009, I suppose, since the beginning of the Eurozone crisis. Everything that Renzi can do is framed by these, you know, all the moves he can make are really set out by this history. Um, I think the thing that struck me most is you, you, you make very clear something that I've been aware of for some time reading about this, whether in newspapers or in academic reports, which is that Italy really, for a number of years, I mean, this goes back to Prodi trying to kind of, uh, you know, meet the Maastricht criteria, but certainly since 2009, since the Eurozone crisis opens, what happened domestically in Italy is increasingly conditioned by these, what we call these exogenous institutional constraints, the most important of which, of course, is the European Union and Central Bank. Um, it was those institutions that effectively forced the resignation of Berlusconi in 2011. You may say that was a good thing, but it wasn't really, it wasn't forced out by anything he did in Italy, and certainly not by any of his private behavior, but by his failure to comply with the requirements of the European Central Bank. And almost, you know, it's worth saying that exactly the same thing happened at exactly the same time in Greece, with the replacement of an elected government of Papandreou by the appointment of um, Papademos, who was another sort of ECB appointee, just like Monti, to do exactly the same kind of job. Um, I think the second thing you show is that the, the moves that have already been made um, in Italy on uh, labour policy um, are very much, I think, constrained, as I said, by these, um, the, by these institutional pressures. So you say that then Renzi is talking to domestic audiences, but he has to keep in mind, I think, the European context. So the kind of questions that I'd like to bring out of this are maybe one or two or three. Um, I think the first one, which I'd like to raise, is um, uh, how, how, do you, how do we really judge where Renzi is going? He seems to be a little bit of a mixture of the two preceding <coughs> approaches, that of Berlusconi and that of Monti to me. Um, perhaps he's doing something more radical. I'd like to hear your assessment of that, because as you said in your introduction, or as Bruce said, you've been in advising Renzi government you can see you're critical of some of their measures. Um, and for instance, as you probably know, if you've been reading the Italian press recently, he's been widely criticized by the unions, um, and he's been criticized for um, maintaining this um, uh, insecurity, these temporary contracts, not reforming the rules on apprenticeships, for instance. So you know, what's he doing maintaining the old temporary contract model and not doing something more radical with that? Um, you suggest that he's betting on behavioral effects. Um, you use this term animal spirits in your introduction, I think, in your first slide, which is a term I think comes from Keynes. Keynes used it in the 1930s to say that in a, an economy, people don't necessarily perform according to rational calculations of benefits, but according to what he calls animal spirits, which is really spontaneous urges, almost, uh, if you like, irrational things. And that's things like consumer confidence. You know, we can't really explain why it comes back, but he's kind of banking on the fact that people have been very depressed and negative, and if you can kind of inspire something, then attitudes will change. But it seems very vague. How do we ever know whether a government is able to raise animal spirits? So that's the first question. Is this, do you think, going to work? Um, the second question is, I, I wanted to ask you about what was much discussed, certainly 10, 15 years ago, but I think it's still very present, is the whole presence of what's called in Italian the economia sommersa, the submerged or hidden economy, the very, very large number of people who um, are working illegally or semi-legally, um, who don't have any kind of contract, not even a kind of contrato progetto, who are working, and I'm talking about um, um, West African or Central African migrant workers working for Caporali in Calabria or Puglia, um, or other people who have maybe don't have a Permesso di soggiorno and working semi legally or illegally, um, and who are probably the most exploited workers in Italy. Um, they don't have any kind of uh, guaranteed minimum, they don't have any right to health care, um, they don't have any right to unemployment benefits. So, 
you know, what about the, uh, can we quantify the size of the workforce and is there anything that the Renzi government or any government in the future could do to regularize the position of these people who for many economists and many measures simply don't exist, they don't even appear on, on their radar. Um, the next question I think comes to do with um, the issue of um, unemployment, particularly youth unemployment. I think this really stands out as a problem, a major problem in Italy. I think one of the figures I've seen is something like four, over 40% of young people, that's people between 15 and 25, are unemployed. And obviously, as you suggested, different ways of measuring unemployment, but it's a very, very large number of people, including people who have come out of high school or out of university with good qualifications who simply don't seem to have any prospect of getting employment. What do you do in a, in a situation like Italy for helping those people? And again, is there something you think Renzi could, the Renzi government could do to change the situation? Um, and the kind of final question I would have to open up discussion is, uh, you know, I, I go back quite a long way with um, Italy, I suppose. I was living there in the early 70s for the first time. And I think one thing I can't help noticing listening to a talk like that is how the terms have changed so radically. Um, uh, as you know, in the 70s, when the Statuto dei Laboratori, the Legge Cetrento, Cetrento, had just been introduced, um, collective bargaining and the collective presence of the organized workers seemed very strong. Um, they had, in many cases, open antagonism to the system. They were demanding rights. The Casa Integrazione you know, was a product of their collective power. Um, and sometime, I think, say between the 80s and early, early 90s, this flipped the other way. Now nobody, even the people who consider themselves to be on the left, would suggest a kind of confrontational approach by the unions, or a simply rights-based demand for work, despite the fact that the Constitution of the Italian Republic, you know, enshrines the right to work in its, one of, in its first articles. It says it's Article um, 3, is it? Which is the article? From that, the law is Article 1, but then it talks about the right to work. Uh, in, I think, think Article 3. So, you know, the, 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 the consensus from right to left seems to me some combination of the flexibility of employers to hire and fire and security of those who aren't in work. Yeah? What, what I think the Scandinavian Social Democrats call flex security, but you talk about it flex insecurity. Right? There doesn't seem to be any way out of that consensus. Is there an alternative to? Um, this kind of management of um, a bad economic situation. Um, and I think that's it. I'd, I'd like to ask those few questions, but perhaps to open up to everybody else, if, if you want to answer first, or whether perhaps to collect some more questions from the audience. Yeah, I'll yeah. okay. Should I answer? Oh, yeah, to you. Yeah, you can answer him. Uh, or, or, I mean, I, I, I've written them down, and uh, we can maybe open up as well. Okay, 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 good, good. No, I don't know the house rules. No, I, 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 I know them. <laughs> now, thank you. Thanks very much. Um, um, all, all very <coughs> important uh, um, questions. Um, how do we really judge where Renzi is uh, heading? Um, and uh, I mean, this bet, which is my take, actually. This is my take. And, uh, um, on uh, uh, how I mean, how do we know? How can we know that uh, when you know the, the, the tide changes, so to speak? And I'm, I'm must be curious. Well, I, I mean, it's. I I think this is the only the only uh, kind of uh, you know uh, leverage he he has uh, because uh, um, uh, I mean Italy is is really in a difficult uh, situation and. Uh, that now the, the spread, the, the yield differential is going down, and so Italy is saving actually a, a lot of money on uh, refinancing <coughs> its debt. It's very good, but there's no, um, I mean, we don't know whether this is, you know, th this is going to stay to be like that, uh, and um, much can be linked to the situation in Ukraine and uh, also to uh, uh, the end, uh, tapering, end of quantitative easing. Uh, in the U.S., so we, we can't expect the situation to be, uh, uh, you know, jolly be good for a, 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 a long period of uh, of time. And um, 
and really, I would say, Italy has a problem of aggregate demands. And uh, within the, so one way is to work at the European Union level, and uh, the current Treasury Minister has tried to do that in order to exploit flexibility given by the European framework um, in order to, uh, uh, let's say, to adopt some expansionary measures. But this fiscal, we, we would have to talk at length of uh, the way in which the un e e Economic and Monetary Union is, is designed. And uh, uh, of course, this, this is a big problem because it's, it's designed for, for good weather. Um, so uh, some, some uh, uh, flexibility can be, can be uh, I mean, the Italian government can take advantage of some flexibility in that regard, mm -hmm. but not much. And so, I mean, I, I see no Marshall Plan coming. So the only way, which is probably what would be needed at, at the time. And uh, um, structural reforms, the way in which they have been implemented, create some problems, as we've seen. I mean, introducing, uh, uh, liberalizing the labor market and uh, um, uh, uh, liberalizing uh, hiring through temporary workers was actually 1997 with the trail reform believed to be, you know, a first best. Huh? So, well, we have a problem of uh, youth un unemployment. Okay, we get these people into the labor market and then they will get better jobs. But this hasn't occurred. And actually there is a mechanism whereby if you start working with one of those contracts, I mean, your, your skills uh, tend to deplete. And so, the, the more you work with those contracts, the less, the lower your chances of uh, getting a better type of contract. So, uh, um, uh, and uh, Italy has run a, uh, uh, a, a primary budget surplus, meaning before servicing, paying interest, servicing its debt, uh, Italy spends less than what it gets through taxes since 1992. Huh? Consistently, consistently. If you look at Dutch figures, I mean, you laugh, huh? Com or, or even German figures. Uh, and the only moment in which uh, 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 Italy, uh, uh, I mean, the Italian uh, primary budget surplus was uh, uh, close to zero was in 2005 with Berlusconi and then mm -hmm. with the crisis, but just for one year. This has depressionary effects. So, the, let's say, I think that's the only way, uh, 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 you know, un unless a Marshall Plan, so to speak, can be introduced, but I see no uh, will on the part of core countries in the Economic and Monetary Union uh, to go about that. Um, I think this is, in a sense, the, the, only, the only bet that a, a, a prime minister in Italy can, uh, can play. I'm sorry to be disappointing, but uh, uh, this, is, this is the way I see it from... Uh, uh, from within. Um, hidden economy, yes, you are totally right. I only, I am one of those economists, I be one of those economists in my presentation that only look at the regular side and, uh, you know, the problems of uh, 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 temporary workers, their unemployment benefits, but there is a huge part and all the more so in the crisis. So if we look at those unemployment figures, I mean, part, part of those people actually started working in the uh, 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 irregular or hidden or black uh, uh, economy. Um, well, actually, I mean, uh, this kind of irregular economy exists everywhere. It, it's particularly high in Sweden, for instance. Mm -hmm. But there, so Italy and Sweden, and when I tell Nordic colleagues, they start <coughs> being puzzled. Uh, but in Sweden, it is moonlighting. In Italy, it is your first job. And that makes a good deal of difference because when it is moonlighting, you have, social, you have rights, you have social rights coming from your first job. And you simply don't want to pay taxes on your second, uh, on your side jobs. Um, whereas in Italy, that's the only game in town, and in particular in, uh, uh, in, 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 in the south. It, is, it really is the only game in town. And once again, I would say this is a problem of yeah, legality and, uh, and uh, uh, rules, but I mean, you, you can lead a horse to the water, right? But uh, 
it's once again, I would say, a problem of demand for, uh, 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 for uh, uh, work. And uh, uh, so what to do about them? Well, this, this is, I mean, Italian governments have tried uh, over, um, I, I, um, I, 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 honestly, I would not know. I could come up with the usual buzzwords and the usual uh, legality, and, uh, but honestly, I mean, I, I have no clue. And this also, I, I don't know, I, I am still on air, and I, so I should not. Uh, but uh, um, I've honestly lost faith in the possibility to rescue some parts of, uh, of the national territory. So the situation of the Italian South is, uh, you know, to be seen nowhere in Europe, not in Galicia, not, I mean, there's simply no comparison. And uh, honestly, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I would, if I were prime minister, I wouldn't know how to go about that, if not basically simply ignoring the problem, which is, you know, a, 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 a solution that has been, um, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in implemented. <laughs> uh, uh, um, youth uh, um, unemployment, once again, it's, it's a problem of demand, it's a problem of skills, so of having an education, and in particular, a uh, uh, vocational training system that uh, provides uh, segments of uh, uh, the parts of uh, uh, the uh, youth, uh, uh, the young population with uh, 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 skills that are still in high demand, and this demand can't be matched. Um, so some specific skills vis-a-vis -vis general skills that are those uh, provided by, by the general education system. Um, and here is where, once again, I mean, just say, okay, we have a big problem of uh, uh, youth unemployment. Okay, let's deregulate the labor market further in order to allow those workers to start working as temporary workers, basically because they cost less to the employers. Um, does not work because it leads to even more skills deflation. So it is a vicious circle. I, my, my, my idea there could be, okay, uh, allow fixed contracts to be extended with no justification uh, up to three years. But the employer must provide these workers with training or with a vow what we in Italy would call a voucher, okay? So with uh, the uh, uh, right to get training from uh, 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 some agents. And the employer should pay for this. And then there should be something like, you know, a termination compensation. If the employer does not renew a fixed term contract, then uh, uh, he or she has to pay the, uh, 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 the worker hmm? for a certain, month, a year, or something like that. But the usual response I get is, well, employers say it's too costly in this space, and so we deregulate even on. Trade unions, yes, it is a phase that it's much studied by, by political scientists. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. This phase is a, is, a, is a phase of concessionary bargaining. Basically, the idea is, well, I mean, if you want to sit, sit at the table, Fine. I mean, we accept you, um, but you, uh, uh, you know, be advised that uh, 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 policy making will take place in the shadow of hierarchy. So we want to. Uh, we are not here to strike deals. Basically, we are here to implement our reforms. So if you want to participate, I mean, feel free. You might have some good ideas, but. Uh, if you don't, or if your ideas uh, don't match our ideas, well, we are so sorry. And uh, unions have no power for structural reasons that we can elaborate on. Uh, uh, has no longer any power to, uh, you know, uh, provide a credible threat. Basically, they represent for workers, and this is shrinking. And uh, uh, work is so. Uh, uh, I, I mean, it's very difficult to organize workers, and in particular, this kind of work. And so, really, I mean, they, 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 they really they don't have much, uh, 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 much uh, 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 bargaining power any, any, any longer. And all the more so after Monti, uh, 
that clearly showed that you can you, you, you can do without unions, right? And uh, um, he introduced the pension reform without just informing unions while creating the problem of Esodati, which uh, you know uh, shows that maybe you might take a month more in crafting reforms and you come up with better reforms <coughs> and, uh, and you create fewer problems. Um, La gatta frettolosa fa i gattini ciechi, right? Uh, 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 and then he, he said, okay, but uh, uh, labor market reform, we are going to involve the unions. But then a process of learning occurred and they understood that they, you know, they could do without the union. And they understood that during the pension reform, right, they were expecting probably more, uh, uh, more people on the streets or more, nothing happened. And they say, well, why don't we do the same also for the labor market reform? And it's perfectly rational. And so now the game has changed. It's kind of a ratchet effect. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, how much time do we have? Is that we out of time? Yes, you? We have to end by 4 to 8. So. Okay, that's fine. So let's let's take some questions from you. Um, I, yeah, Cora. Yes, um, I have two quick questions. The first is uh, the most striking number in your presentation was certainly the one of youth unemployment. However, another very problematic number was the one of the GDP. Uh, and so I wonder, as much as we try to, and I think the priority is to find uh, work for people, uh, where do you put them to work if there is really nothing to do? Part of that low GDP is also because there is no training, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But is there something that Renzi can do? Basically, my question is uh, to solve the problem of what seems to be at this point an inept uh, entrepreneurial class at the same time, because I think there is a problem with with, with them too. Like these people, I understand there are structural issues with you know the manufacturers gone away, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but there are many things that could be done for our hair. Uh, what can these people do and what can the politicians do for them? Uh, and second thing, quickly, uh, uh, when you said about the South that uh, so much is possibly lost, I mean, uh, you know, I don't want to believe that. And uh, uh, for instance, when one thinks that tourism, the way it's so broken up and, and not really working in Italy nowadays and we lost so much uh, potential in tourism and wouldn't the South of Italy be just the perfect place to maybe restart some of that? I don't know. Thank you. I think given the time constraint perhaps we could take another question and then um, get from the answer together. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if you can comment on um, the, the 80 euro that Renzi seems to be making a lot of and Osanta Euro when we do stuff, right? I mean, what is he, what are you attempting to achieve short-term jobs and the um, business owners not willing to then convert them or extend them into a more committed job where there is more opportunity and more challenge for the employees to develop and grow. So uh, I don't, how, do, how are those two things reconciled? Uh, maybe one more question if uh, is there anybody else? What, what is there should be one. <laughs> Otherwise, I can't. No, okay. Yeah, I just want to ask if you can, uh, yeah, you follow me, Nicholas, but if you can elaborate more about the, the South question and um, your concern about that. And if I recall well, you said something like there is no hope or something similar to that, that the South is you know, basically outside of Europe. There's nothing we can do about it. So just if you can. things that can't be replaced by globalization. In other words, in the furniture sector up north, in the Emilia Romagna, the lighting sec uh, sector, things up in Milano that 
Well, they can be replaced by Chinese goods, but the South, with its agricultural wealth, I'm sure it contributes to GDP. Yeah. Just, uh, I just have to be the last question. There's yeah. also part of Renzi, the agenda, this position uh, in relation to the South, or is just your... I think several of those questions kind of come into one about the South. Yes. The same, yeah. I didn't want to be provocative. I mean, and, uh, okay, should I? Okay. Um, no, no, no. So I, um, I, I, I get to the south uh, uh, later. Um, um, say the problem of uh, um, GDP growth. Yes, and once again, of course, this is. Uh, most pressing problem is one of uh, aggregate demand, once again, which also links uh, to uh, the question on the 80 euro, which might sound, uh, you know, not, not very much, but actually, and particularly, I mean, it, 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 it uh, uh, say it is reduced the, 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 the more uh, your, uh, your, the higher the payroll uh, is, um, uh, but it is not. I mean, for somebody earning uh, 1,000 euro or, or 900 euro or 1,100 euro per month, 80 euro per month, I, I can tell you, it's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. And uh, so it's not just, you know, chicken feet. It might sound chicken feet, but once you are in, a, in that situation, it, honestly, it is not. And, uh, um, and this, of course, uh, uh, um, uh, and, and, and it has to do with the idea of, uh, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, these people, and uh, well, Italian academics are not too far from these people, uh, uh, at least young Italian academics, uh, um, actually have a, uh, 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 let's say, uh, consume, tend to consume, every euro that, uh, 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 you know, uh, adds to their payroll, okay, their basically savings are non-existent. So if you, gave, if you give them, a, if you give 80 euro to people earning 5,000 euro per month, uh, you will have no effect on consumption. But if you give 80 euro to people who earn 900 or 1,000 euro per month, those 80 euros will be spent entirely. And so this is, uh, you know, the, the, the idea right. that this should uh, 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 kick in uh, more consumption. And once again, aggregate demand. Um, and firms and uh, uh, employers, entrepreneurs, um, Yes, of course, there are structural, as we all know, there are structural, uh, 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 there are, uh, I don't know if my presentation is still there or if I can, but uh, I had a, a slide that I didn't want to, okay, this is uh, employment in uh, uh, very small vis-a-vis -vis large, uh, uh, large firms, and uh, uh, you, uh, you see how employment uh, in very small micro, less than 10 uh, 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 workers, including the uh, 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 employer, huh? him or herself, in Italy. I mean, this makes almost half of the uh, uh, labor force, or actually almost half of uh, 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 employment, which is not self-employment, so no lawyers and so on and so forth. Um, whereas, uh, uh, employment in large uh, firms, uh, it makes only uh, uh, 20%. Then you have, uh, these are the usual uh, figures, then you have uh, to uh, uh, be aware of the fact that a lot of those uh, small firms actually are zero uh, uh, size firms, meaning that it's only the, uh, uh, um, the employer, actually there's only one person, okay? And uh, uh, we are the champions uh, of those. So if you if you detract, uh, so to speak, something that cannot be done in these figures because the denominators are different, okay? But uh, if you take into account this, still Italy employees in uh, in micro firms, employees 
Huh? So other people that are employed uh, 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 on top of the uh, employer um, in industry and services, no public sector, um, make uh, uh, almost 30% of the uh, uh, employees vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, you know, 15% uh, in uh, Germany, for instance. This is well known. So there are, say, structural um, limits because clearly, I mean, the room for productivity gains and for training uh, in, 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 in such firms is, is limited. I'm not an industrial economist, maybe some in the room is, but clearly it is limited. Okay, there might be very small firms uh, uh, with uh, uh, you know, smart ideas on apps uh, or uh, 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 you know, some revolutionary ideas, but most of these, in particular in Italy, and if we were uh, to look at sectors, we would see this, uh, are in the traditional sector, right? And so, um, but then I would say that, I mean, that there are, uh, um, there are studies on this, and yes, I mean, there are the, let's, let's call it the, 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 the entrepreneurial class um, has, bears many responsibilities uh, for the current situation in the sense that, um, uh, uh, Clearly, I mean, it has had, you know, a, 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 um, it has tried to extract the highest rents huh? uh, uh, possible, and you can see it. This is just one example uh, when you look at those figures regarding contracts. So basically, uh, temporary contracts are not converted into open-ended contracts till the last minute. So one hypothesis that you could make is, okay. There are, you can't hire somebody with an open-ended contract immediately because then, I mean, you have to fire them and uh, it's costly. So you use uh, fixed contracts as a screening device. Well, this, this is not the case. Italian employers don't use contra uh, uh, fixed contracts as a screening device. They use them as a cost-saving device. This is allowed by the current regulation, but they ask more and more for this. And you can see this with uh, um, apprenticeship. Hmm? Um, apprenticeship, you get a lower wage in exchange for training. And then employers complain because we have to give workers such training. Huh? So they get the discount on wages and they complain because they have to give training. And this is all across the board. Uh, I am not trying to uh, skip the elephant in the room. And now, I mean, I, 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 I wonder why I actually raised that. So it is not a policy position. And I'm here in my personal capacity. Uh, I, I want to state this loud and clear. Uh, 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 also regarding all the other issues, I'm here in my personal capacity simply because it's the only one I have. I have no formal uh, uh, positions for first. Second, it was just, you know, the, the, it, it, I am very sad to say this. So it is not a policy position, it is not what we should do, but honestly, it is, it, I, it, this, is, this is something that I'm quite easily disillusioned uh, about. Tourism, right, and in this sense, I, I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm no Renzian at all, okay? Having no hopes uh, regarding some. So, um, I'm just, you know, the depressed uh, uh, Turinese, basically. The uh, 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 um, Turinese, as you know, are always look at the dark side of, of things. Uh, and uh, very, very, yeah, very briefly, tourism. You are totally right. This could be, this could be, this could be. I mean, I'm 43 uh, next week, and I've heard this for many years. This could be. Um, but now, we, uh, once again, we face some very strong structural um, uh, uh, problems. Uh, devolution occurred in 2001 to regions all across the board. This, this was one of the uh, reasons of the Italian uh, decline. Hmm? Uh, 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 uh. So imagine, I mean, imagine having kind of a national agency. Huh? that can actually spur, they can use a carrot and a stick also regarding uh, 
uh, tourism policies. Well, this is no longer possible, okay? And uh, um, so, I, 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 I see your point and I agree, but I also see, uh, uh, you know, the uh, 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 structural constraints that are given by the current institutional uh, uh, situation in Italy. So if I may, and once again, my personal, and I, once again, I'm on air, I shouldn't say this, but uh, my personal take on this is, well, maybe the most important reform in Italy would be, let's say, uh, retrenching on the constitutional reform of 2001. Clearly, this is, I mean, once you've made a, a, a fish soup out of an aquarium, it's very difficult to go back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.